I mean, they're talking about your ancestry, your mother, <laughs> your sexuality, everything. When does it get, does it ever get to a point where it gets under your skin and, and it affects your concentration on a diamond and on the ice? Was it the home fans are talking about? <laughs> Well, I, I always felt that plexiglass would help, you know. <laughs> really, uh, you felt a little bit more sheltered than you guys had to walk back to the dugout and sit on the on deck circle, especially on the way places. But um, it was, it's all part of it. I agree completely with what Donnie said. I remember skating around the old uh, Spectrum in Philly and just kind of laughing, adrenaline laughing, because the whole place was going crazy, you know, against you. And yet you were excited, you know, you are like, here you go, you're not ready for this one, you're never ready to play. And thinking about, thinking of Donnie saying that, you know, I was getting chills kind of thinking about it. I was like, yeah, I used to be crazy in some of these places, but, you know, it got you up for it, and you were excited to go, and those games were not, were not uh, hard in the fact that you just went out and you just played and played. Some other games became harder, and, it's just all part of you get used to it as the years go by. It doesn't become uh, distraction. It becomes distraction when you're losing because it just adds to what's going on. But uh, usually it's not that big a deal. Yeah, I, I can relate just to, from a media standpoint. You go into enemy territory. You're from New York and you're doing a, a live shot outside the enemy stadium. In particular, if your team won that day, honest to God, this happened to us. We were in Cleveland for a, a playoff game. And we're doing a live shot across the street from the Jake. Now, across the street from the Jake was the Gund Arena. And as we're getting ready to do the live shot, the Yankees won that day, the arena is empty. It's not emptying from a basketball game or a hockey game. It's emptying from a WWF night. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Beyond the shadow of a doubt, the scariest night I've had in my career. <laughs> I heard stuff that I, I'd be embarrassed to say, and that's saying a lot. Matt. To the right. Hey guys, um, this question to Brian. Uh, when you were traded away and really that fan is really kind uh, of our out, was it, what was it like for you and, and did it affect you wanting to come back once you were a free agent? Yeah, I was devastated, no question about it. You know, I thought that I was led to believe that, you know, I was going to be in New York for my career, and if that had changed, you know, I would have thought I would have heard about it beforehand. But uh, I actually got traded on my birthday, and I uh, flew back to New York that night you know, from Boston, grabbed my stuff, jumped in a plane the next morning, went to Toronto and played the ball team, the Islanders, the next, uh, the next right. night. So it was a, it was a whirlwind. Of emotions, and it uh, it definitely hurts. Uh, still hurts, you know. Uh, and that that probably will never go away. Uh, but that's more focused, uh, you know, finally focused. Not really affect any of the people that I came in uh, contact with. You know, the fans, uh, all the great uh, people that work in the organization. And uh, it didn't really affect me um, when I was a free agent because the, the Rangers weren't interested after the lockout and me coming back. And it was the following year uh, after I played in Boston, and uh, Tom Rennie had reached out to me and he said, you know, if you're interested, we, we think you can help out. So I just wasn't sure I'd played on this, some teams that had not made the playoffs for a number of years. I got to go in the playoffs with Toronto, but uh, after missing it again in Boston and missing it for the six years with the Rangers, before that I was getting tired out mentally, and I wasn't sure the Rangers were ready yet to make the playoffs again. I didn't want to go back and go through that all again with how nice everyone had been to me. And, um, and I wasn't sure that I, that I should be playing anymore um, at that time. So it never really came into, into play. And when I got traded, they never said, as soon as you're a free agent, we'll bring you back or any of that. It just never came into, uh, into play. Gentlemen. How you doing? Uh, my name is Nick. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Ken for putting this together. It's, I'm sure I can speak for everyone that it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to have you guys on a stage. Uh, Brian, I 
I think I know your answer, but Don, I'd like to know your answer as far as what's the single game, if there's one game that stands out in each of your minds when you look back at your careers, that, you know, that one game that, like it was yesterday. Uh, lots of games, really. A lot of moments, you know, when you kind of, just give you kind of a couple of moments that really I remember really clearly. It's being called up, you know, being called from the minor leagues at the end of the year, driving to New York, you know, like kind of my best friend in the minor leagues. We drive into New York, come right to the stadium, and go out on the field. It's kind of like that childhood. You've worked your whole life for this, and you kind of made it. It's like you've made it. You really haven't, but you had. You know, you you got there at least. Uh, that's probably the, the one of the, the moments. Um, and, and then the next one probably that is the biggest is going out to run first game of the playoffs in '95. And the place was just jammed, and it was crazy. And I really felt like I was fast that day. <laughs> when I ran, I really felt like I could run. And so that was probably, you know, those two moments. A lot of moments, obviously, with that, you know, the bad title, the MVPs, and, and played on some good teams. And uh, the way the Yankee fans were treating me at the end of that, they kind of knew it was in my career, so every bat, it was like, you know, it was like your last one, and, and but nobody does that better than New York in, in, the, in that full circle how they treat guys uh, that, that they like and respect. So uh, those are kind of moments. It's interesting. You say it, and I find, I mean, you know, I, I would think for sure, right to you, that would be, you know, winning the cup. But so many athletes say that very first game, is, is the moment. I remember when, when they were closing the old Yankee Stadium, we did a special, and I was fortunate enough one morning, about 8 o'clock in the morning, and I'm walking around the stadium talking with Yogi Berra. Now, here's a guy with 10 World Series rings as a player, and, and I, I said, okay, just tell me, Yogi, what's your number one moment here at Yankee Stadium? And he said, it's first game. And I, I was floored. He said, it's exactly, it was almost you read from the same script. It's what you dream about, and it comes true. It's re really interesting. Down in front over here, second level. Okay. I have two questions for Brian. Um, the first is, if there is one, um, I'd love to hear your best Mike Keenan story. And um, the second is, I've noticed you on uh, on TV lately, and I'm curious what that's like to be, you know, on the other side of the the analyst booth, I guess. My best Mike Keenan moment actually just happened last year at Wayne Gretzky's uh, his little fantasy camp. And it was the first time I talked to Mike as a friend. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I said, wow, that's pretty different from how he was. So, no, we, we had our differences. As, uh, actually, I didn't have any differences with him. He had some differences with me. <laughs> but, you know, that's one of those things where by the time the year goes on and you get to the end, it's like, all right, looks like we're stuck together. And let's uh, figure this out. I, don't, I know we wouldn't want to stand the cup without Mike as coach. And I, I think he feels the same way about uh, if I wasn't on that team. Um, and it's been great to see him uh, in, in different settings since then. The TV I'm doing right now is, uh, is very little. You know, I'm here a couple times a month. And I, I enjoy watching hockey. I, I enjoy talking about it. I love being back in the garden. Um, work without traveling most of the time, which is pretty much the easiest thing you could ever do. I mean, you hear Al everywhere from the Olympics to doing the marathons, and you know, he can, he makes me excited about cross country skiing. You know, kayak flowers, you know, like, this guy knows everything. You know, he's so good, so he'll look me in the eye and he can see I'm fumbling for words, and he just cuts right in, he just goes. So. Um, it's fun, you know, I, I don't know where it's going to go or whether I'm going to do any more of it, but uh, it's great coming back. Matt, where are you? Hold on, let me get to this gentleman here. Thank you very much. Uh, Brad Turner, a question for both of you. We just got done with a great World Series. Unfortunately, Yankees weren't in. But in terms of the World Series, it was a great World Series. Unfortunately, it was also one of the lowest rated ever. 
question to both of you. You're each made commissioner of the respective sports. What's one thing you would change about the game? Maybe to reach out to Dan and do something in the game to get more people involved and get the leadership back up in the game. Thank you. Well, I haven't really looked into the you know, ratings and all that stuff. Part of time, it seems like the ratings have something to do with kind of who's playing. And with uh, San Francisco, nobody cares about San Francisco. <laughs> 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 right. So I, that has something to do with it. I think it's the Yankees and the Dodgers and, and the World Series, and that's what kind of get both coast, West and that, going crazy.